John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's probably the most well-known verse in all the Bible. Matter of fact, if you go on a Google search and uh, you just ask the question, what is the most popular verse in the Bible? That is at the top of the list every time. But what does it mean? I mean, like, think about this with me. If we went back a couple thousand years ago and we were there at the time that Jesus was crucified, we celebrated that yesterday as Good Friday. And then on, on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, what we consider Easter, right? That that would have been such a day of great celebration. But what about Saturday? What about the day in between? You know, I think if we were there on that day, we'd have been going through a lot of questions. Why? God, why? How can this be a part of your plan? Have we wasted our time with this Jesus? How can he be gone just like this? How can you be in control and let that happen? We saw the miracles. We saw everything he did. We lived with him. And yet he's gone. I think John 3.16 answers the question. Go with me through this. For God. God is the creator of everything. Creator of the entire universe. He is massive. He is so big. He is so great. But what you and I need to understand is that he is. He's real. He's there. God. So loved. This God, he did not just come and create and then leave. He did not abandon us. He has not looked at all of our struggles and just shrugged his shoulders like, eh, they'll get over it. No. God so loved the world. He loved every person, no matter their age, no matter their race, no matter their religious background, no matter their belief in him or not, or lack of belief, no matter what uh, stage of life you are in, no matter whether you are rich or poor, God loves you. For God so loved the world. Hmm. God so loved the world that he gave when you say gave, a lot of times you think of a gift that is given to somebody that, well, somebody that deserves a gift. Maybe it's a birthday or maybe it's Christmas or maybe uh, it's an anniversary, but it's somebody that you have an ongoing mutual relationship with. But when it says that God gave his son, mm -hmm, when God gave he wasn't giving to a world that loved him back. It was a one-way relationship. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Only makes it obvious that this is valuable. But son, the only of anything, if I, if I ha only have one of anything, that, that one thing is probably quite valuable to me. But when it comes to a child, your own child, that's a new level. God gave his son. Why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes, believe, to believe, not just to know about, not just to say, eh, yeah, I said a prayer when I was a kid and moved on. No, to believe moves you to action. It is to fall back on, to trust with all of your heart, to rely entirely upon this one thing. This one thing is what's going to carry me through my life and through eternity. I'm trusting in this. And this is the Son, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish to die, but not just a physical death, but a spiritual death. You see, the scary part about this whole ordeal is that you and I as, as sinful people, we have to face the justice of God who is righteous. 
He's, he's, he's a righteous God. He's a holy God. And our sin cannot stand in his presence. And it must be punished. And the punishment is equal, is only going to be equal to the, uh, the, the crime, the sin. It is just for the sin, right? And a lot of times we look at it and we say, well, well, hell is too much. The lake of fire is too much. Eternity, that is too much. But it's because we don't realize how offensive our sin is. You say, but I only told a lie. It was a little thing. It's not about how you broke God's law. It's the fact that you broke God's law. If I were to take a rock, a giant rock, and just throw it and break a TV, or if I were to take a little pebble and throw it and break the TV, the owner of the TV is going to be upset either way. I can't come to him and say, oh, well, it, it was a small rock. It was a small rock that I broke it with. No, you broke the TV. We broke God's law. We've lied. We've stolen. We've looked with lustful hearts, lustful eyes. We've, we've hated people. The Bible considers that to be murder. And to look with lust considers to be adultery. We've blasphemed his name. We've departed from his ways, guys. We're sinful. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Perish. But have everlasting life. Instead of perishing, those who believe will have everlasting life in a relationship, an ongoing, eternal, eternal relationship with God. Listen, I understand some of you are watching this and you, you've got questions, you've got doubts, and, and I'm not going to take this, this video and be able to explain and answer all those questions for you. But maybe you've heard the word gospel before. The word gospel means good news. Before you can understand, before you can really appreciate the good news, you have to get the bad news. The bad news was our sin that I already shared about. But the good news is that Jesus came to pay for our sins. He made a way for you and I to enter back into a relationship with him. See, the gospel can be broken down like this. God created us to have a relationship with him, but he also created us with the capacity to make our own decisions. Our sin, because we chose that path, our sin separates us from God. And sin cannot be removed by any level of good works that we do, by going to church, by being baptized, by doing all kinds of good things, a relief work for the needy. Like None of that can separate our sins. It can't cover our sins. But paying the price for our sin, Jesus died and rose again. And everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And that life begins now and goes through eternity. Would you trust in Jesus today? Would you stop right now? What would keep you from giving your heart to him? From asking him, I mean, I don't have to walk you through a prayer. If, you, if you've ever apologized to somebody before, you could start there. But then just asking him to come into your heart, to save you, to forgive you for your sins, and trust in him, to carry you the rest of the way. Guys, if you don't have a good a home church that, that you can go to, look for something. Look for, uh, I, I'm in a Baptist church, and, and I would trust that, that you could go and find a church that, that would Bible-based, Bible-believing church, wherever you're at, and start there. Get yourself a Bible. Start reading it. The church is not perfect, but the Bible is. Find God's word and get into it and trust in it. Grow from it. Learn from it. And guys, remember, God wants a relationship with you. And that is the why. He went to the cross on Friday. He resurrected on Sunday. But on Saturday, we ask why. And John 3, 16, it answers the question. Mm -hmm.